Hey y'all, welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank and today I'm joined by Thomas. Aloha everybody. And we have Isaac from the Infinity Bros Podcast. How you doing, Isaac? Doing great. Glad to be here. Awesome. Hi. Before we get into anything, can you give us a quick rundown? What is it like over at Infinity Bros? What are you guys doing? Yeah, uh, we are a group of six guys that host a podcast, mostly pop culture uh, related, started based on the MCU. Obviously, we're the Infinity Bros. That was kind of when the whole uh, Infinity War Endgame craze was going on. Pre-COVID, uh, by the way, I feel like we got to jump on on a lot yeah. of podcasts that way. But but yeah, we, we rotate hosting, uh, have a great time doing that and streaming on, on Twitch, doing a lot of different stuff. But yeah, we just we just have a good time. We do what we would normally do, but then we just broadcast that to to the internet. So <laughs> that's the best way to do it, right? Then we're, yeah. you're having fun with friends, you're just sharing that fun with exactly. other people. Exactly. Way to go. You guys have a great TikTok, great podcast, a great social media presence. I remember when you guys first came on the scene, actually, and your guys' logo was the Infinity Gauntlet. And I was like, can they do that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we never got any emails, so <laughs> I know. I was jealous. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Damn. <laughs> yeah. We we actually looked into that quite extensively when we were starting. Yeah. Like, hmm, are we gonna get hit with anything here? Like what's the <laughs> what's the possibility that we get a cease and desist at some point? But that's worth framing for, though. If Marvel's gonna send you a letter, you frame that bad boy. Yeah, yeah as of right definitely. now, still hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> that's awesome. like uh uh they were at one point called East Coast Avengers, now that they're like Batcave mm-hmm. and Beyond. But when they <laughs> yeah. were East Coast Avengers, I was just like, it's a matter of time, man. <laughs> you guys are waiting for that. Letter. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 But we thing. we've we've done a few things, a little a few yeah. tweaks uh to our logo and stuff like that Absolutely. to make it just just a little bit different enough to hopefully not attract too much attention so it it could be so, anything any gauntlet you know it could be any yeah. purple space mm-hmm. alien uh magical <laughs> gauntlet yeah, in the whole yeah imaginary totally. world <laughs> <laughs> so as we're going through this episode we're going to be uh talking more about the infinity bros towards the end but make sure you guys are going through the links in the description following up subscribe review the podcast everything like that again doubling down make sure you follow on social media and on uh tiktok as well so especially if you're a magic the gathering fan that's how I'm catching up with Magic the Gathering because I'm not into it too much, mm-hmm. but that's the best place to get into it. That's good. All right. We're going to be starting off with our question of the week. Which Marvel character would make a great leader for the Justice League and which DC character would it be an effective leader for the Avengers? Um, I'm just going to start off right now. I only have one because I ha- it took mm. all my brain power for this one, too. I really <laughs> think Martian Manhunter would do great with the Avengers. Mm. I'm a big John Johns fan as it is, but he has the right temperament for it. I think he would work well with Cap. And Iron Man, like he has that kind of like in between the two of them. I think you'd have a lot of fun with it. Plus, his alien stuff is just believable enough because you know how DC kind of leans in on the science and the aliens while Marvel's more like mutant stuff. So you have to kind of find that balance. I'm going John Johns. Yeah, yours was fun. Uh, I I wanted this person to be the leader from DC to Marvel just because I wanted to throw like just see how they would react. Like this, it probably doesn't make sense. I don't know if they would be a great leader. Um, I think they would, but I'm going to go with John Stewart Green Lantern. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I because him. I want to see the rest of the Avengers be like, wait, so let me get this straight. You have a magic ring that can make anything. And and then he's just like, yeah. And seeing that with the constructs with the Avengers would be pretty cool. So yeah, that's what we'll go with. Um, real synergy I, attacks. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Love me some synergy attacks. Yeah, honestly, when I was thinking about it, that a Green Lantern would fit like powers wise the best in the Avengers. That's what was my original thought as well. So I like that choice. Mm. That's a good one. Nice. There you go. The other side, though, I was like, okay, which Marvel character I'm going to. And I was like, okay, I'm such a Cyclops fan. I think everybody thinks that's what I'm going to choose. But it's not who I am going to go with is Magneto for the justice league because his powers are just strong enough to where it matches the rest of the justice league. Plus he's so confident in himself that, you know, like him with Batman would be interesting. Exactly. What uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> exa- you know what I'm saying? Like him with uh Superman, I also think would be interesting. The Superman can't really fault him. He's like, when he tells him his backstory and why he should lead and, and why he's so angry or whatever, I just would love that dynamic. So both of them is just like power plays just to see how they would work within those teams. 
Yeah. I, I for real just want to hear the conversations on the Justice League side of things. Like that's where I'm in. <laughs> That would be so fantastic. Yeah. Totally. I, I actually, so you mentioned that you didn't pick the one that everybody thought you would pick. I did pick the one that everybody thought you would okay, pick. Okay. Captain America is pretty much the obvious choice to be mm-hmm. like a leader in DC just because like his his tactical intelligence just I feel like he would fit in in well with any group. And even though his power levels are not necessarily on the level of like the DC heroes, like those guys, the DC heroes, like they're basically gods, right? Like those guys yeah. are just ridiculous in terms of their power sets, but his tactical intelligence is so high that he he's on the level of Batman as far as his, yeah. you know, like tactical intelligence. So I feel like he would fit really well in being able to, you know, tell everybody how to work together. And he, he is kind of a Boy Scout like uh, Superman, but he he definitely has a little bit more of a gritty side to him so i feel like he could relate a lot to to batman and superman as well like he could kind of be you know in between those guys because they're on you know opposite ends so many times in in the comics so he could kind of be an in-betweener uh between those big two guys so i especially like how he represents humanity and like while Mm -hmm. superman we have to kind of see him come down to our level Captain America starts at our level and then elevates us. Right. So yeah. there's a, like the readability of Captain America sometimes is a little easier than the readability of the Boy Scout Superman. Yes. I, I could just see yeah. Cap and Superman in a field somewhere just tossing a baseball. Like they're going <laughs> to be best friends be at the end of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> All right. Let's do some network updates. Uh, we have the finale for the Who's Got Next Game podcast Wii tournament. Uh, go check that out, guys. And we have an interview with the creative team behind The Herald. That is a new Western supernatural comic book coming out. Outlast podcast continues. I think we have about six more weeks of that one for the season. And then Capital Creative Showcase is going to be coming April 20th to West Sacramento. Come on, hang out with us, guys. The team from Who's Got X Game podcast will be there. Of course, uh, Geek Freaks will be there. And we're going to be meeting a lot of local developers, all that kind of fun stuff. So if you're in the West, if you're in the Sacramento region, come hang out with us at the Capital Creative Showcase on April 20th. Challenge accepted. What are we doing over on Challenge Accepted? I forgot about that part in the notes. <laughs> yeah. So over on Challenge Accepted, we are doing A24 month. We are two movies down. We started with Ex Machina. We just did The Green Knight. So both those episodes are up. But what's fun is next that we have Iron Claw. And mm-hmm. if you write a review, you take a picture of it, you send us this picture, you will be entered in to win your own A24 hat. So, yeah, it's a ton of fun over there. Um, I'm thinking maybe we'll talk about it offline, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe we do the last movie up to a vote or I don't know, maybe everything everywhere all at once. I don't know. I feel like those are obvious choices. Yeah, there's some obvious ones there, but it's a lot of fun, guys. Come hang out with us, and, and then we're reviewing all the X-Men, and if you watched that last X-Men episode, I've been mourning with you, but it's been <laughs> tough. I went out and bought a shirt after that episode because I was like, I need to have Gambit near me. Dude, Boy, that's a sweet shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. All right, let's go ahead and get into the news. All right, let's start with Star Trek news. We're going to go quick through this one here. Uh, Strange New World is renewed for season four. They're currently filming season three. So this is a good sign when they're just like, boom, start it again. And then Lower Decks is going to be concluding with season five. I love me some Lower Decks. The best thing about this is it's not because the show's bad or anything like that. It's because story-wise, they're no longer in the Lower Decks. They all got promoted last season. So it sounds like we might get another run with the same crew, but now running their own ship. That's distant stuff, not necessarily anytime soon. Are you guys watching yourself some Star Trek? Yeah, definitely. Strange New Worlds, you got me hooked on it. Uh, you're like, man, if you got to start anywhere, watch Stranger Worlds. I have. I love it. Uh, it's not even something that's like required watching, I guess, for me. And now I'm just doing it for fun. So, yeah, Stranger Worlds is just, oh, man, what a good show. I love it. Super well made. I think it's like Paramount at their best, uh, especially Paramount Plus. Um, it is a lot of fun. And then over at uh, Lower Decks, it's got a good combination of like fan service for the Star Trek fans. Like they're, they're dropping Easter eggs like nothing. Um, but also they're just good stories, good fun stories and very well produced. It's Rick and Morty without like having to focus on the story. Rick, sometimes I'm focusing on the story of Rick and Morty. Like it's so meta that I'm like, I let me keep track of where we're at. Um, it's not that. So it's kind of nice. That crossover episode last season, which was awesome. They brought, and it's like Huey from the boys. So yeah. you're like, what? This is like, why is he here? It was just great. Like they're taking some chances, I guess, 
for me, it seems like with this show. And yeah, just uh, it made me want to go back and watch Lower Decks, which I did. I started it. So, yeah, it, both of the shows are just so good. He is a major Trekkie, by the way. So, um, uh, God, what's his, I can't remember his real name for some reason, but uh, uh, Quaid, Jack Quaid, there we go. Jack, Jack Quaid. Quaid. Yeah. He's actually a Trekkie. So it's just fun whenever there's a Star Trek event and he's there and he's just geeking out and he's got his the boys outfit, too. And I'm just I'm a big fan of his. So it's <laughs> good. Uh, Isaac, have you have you watched any Star Trek? Are you Trekkie at all? So I'm not much of a Trekkie. I will admit oh. I love Star Wars. Star Trek always is like super intimidating to me because I was like, there's yeah. so much of it out there. Like, I just have no idea where to start. My good buddy, uh, Scott Higa, though, he's a big Trekkie and he's been like harping on me like, dude, you can just jump in anywhere. Like there's a yeah, you're right. like every show has like a good starting place basically for it. So it, it might happen at some point. But uh, as of right now, I haven't watched a whole lot of it. Yeah. Stranger yeah. Worlds. That's the I don't know anything about Star Trek. Stranger Worlds has been Stranger like a Worlds. perfect. Okay yeah gateway for me and it's like it feels i guess it's more star trek right like the movies weren't necessarily right. really star trek right frank so the the newer movies with chris pine they kind of like star wars up the star trek stuff and then they came out with discovery which was it was kind of the resurgence of star trek which was needed but they tried too many things like a continuous story through the whole show stuff like that and finally people were like just give us old school star trek and so that's what strange the world is so it feels very much like the old ones, but with like them clean as CGI looks good. Next up, this is such a classic show from you guys. NBC. I remember the, the saying, save the cheerleader, save the world. That oh, yeah. was so big in the marketing. Uh, Heroes is coming back once again. It was from 2006. It had a resurgence in 2015 for one season. It's back again. They're shopping for streaming uh, services now. Um, they said they're going to bring back some of the original cast and a whole lot of new cast. Um, Tim Kring, the original creators behind it. Uh, this to me, like this was so needed at the time. I don't know how needed it is now. We have a lot of very good superhero shows. What do you what do you think, Isaac? Yeah, I so I will also admit to I haven't watched the original show, but I do remember the hype behind mm -hmm. it when it was happening at the time. And you're right. I mean, it was at a time where superhero shows and movies were just getting going. Like, I mean, we had. We had some of those early, you know, like the X-Men movies, the Spider-Man movies and stuff like that. But it was just it was just getting rolling. And now that we have yeah. so much superhero content, it's it'll be interesting to see how uh, they spin this show to make it like a must watch show. Uh, but I mean, I think there's still a lot of nostalgia for the original show out there. So, I mean, hey, if, if they end up catching up with somebody, I might have to go back and watch the original show before the new one starts. The original show is very good. I would skip the 2015 little reboot they did called Heroes Reborn. You could skip that one. That right. was just a try. Good yeah. to know. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thomas, what do you think about this? Because it's a, it's a lot of the X-Men story. So it's almost like even worse time to bring it back because you don't need the X-Men story right now. Marvel's going to do it in a second. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, the original show was so good in that first season, but much like what we just experienced last year, it was a victim of the writer's strikes. Yeah. So then there was this writer strike and then it was like, where are they going to go with it? And they tried to cobble another season together and it just didn't seem like it worked. Um, I, I loved it. I loved hero from the original show. Uh, what's his name? Something Quinto who ended up playing Spock in the Chris Pine yeah, Star Trek movies in the series in Siler in the series. He was One of the so best good villains in any superhero show. He would just sit there and do like he had, um, what was it? Telekinesis, I guess. Yeah. He would just sit there and like do this along you. And he was like slicing into your head. It was oh, such God. a trip. You would just see like wow. some blood start to drip from the head. It was crazy. Totally. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know if he had to like touch their brain or like eat their brain, but then he could take their power. It was really yeah, strange. The and they never, yeah. from what I remember, never really answered it, but it had a very specific tone. And I don't know if that tone will translate anymore. That's why I'm really curious to your point, how they update it, because I think that void, so to speak, has been filled by the boys. Um, yes. It wasn't as violent, you know, but but it had this like mis mystery to it. And I think the boys in Gen V are doing that really, really well. Obviously we have Disney plus and all the Marvel MCU stuff going on. So yeah, I'm just, I'm curious how they're going to try to plant themselves in a space that makes them feel unique. Um, but I, I, I trust that they can do it. I mean, they probably have a big budget, so let's, let's go. The, the key I think is that dialogue is important for, um, for, for this show is, is like, they would talk it out. You would find out like, Oh, Siler was one of their brothers the whole time. It was almost like a soap opera. And that might be the loophole that they can hit because the boys is fantastic, but they'll just go to Homeland or wrecking people. 
And then you're like, oh, that's cool. But it's not like the dialogue part that you normally would be. So there might be a hole in the superhero genre for a soap opera. And that's where they could probably fill it in. Yeah. We'll see. Siler, though, is dope. I do hope they bring him back the most <laughs> out of everybody. And Hito yeah. Nakamoto, which is the guy that like traveled through time, Hito, was Dude. so cool. Yeah, Hito was like, my man, I love that. Anything he was in, I was like, all for the like, Hero, there he is, yeah! So, and, uh, dude, they bring him back, that's that's going to be an automatic win. They did a great job with his character, too, because in the beginning, he was like just an office worker that found out he could travel through time. Then, like, you start to see versions of him from the future that had, like, the samurai sword he wore all the time, and he would just, like, pop in, slice somebody up, pop out. It's like, oh, somebody mastered their powers? Okay. Very <laughs> yeah. much Jubilee from X-Men 97 this last couple episodes where we're like, yeah. oh, snap, that's what Max Level looks like. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, Bishop's probably the most, but, like, with a Jubilee character where they start off so low and then yeah. all of a sudden are just Omega. It's, it's awesome. It was cool. All right, our next little quickie here. We have the Jon Snow series, just called Snow, is now officially on hiatus, pause forever, that kind of thing like that. And I, I do like the reason for this. Kit Harrington came out and said, look, the reason we had to stop it is because we just didn't have a good enough story. And if they came out with any hot garbage, but it was starring Kit Harrington, I'd watch it. So I appreciate that they're like, we have enough stuff for Game of Thrones coming out. We don't need to just shove this down everybody's throat. I don't know. I think this is a good idea. I think it's a good sign for HBO as a whole. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page there. I think if you don't have a good enough story, then yeah, sure. By all means, like hold off, like until you do, or, you know, and until the project morphs into something else that is going to please fans, because obviously we saw what the last season of game of Thrones did to the fan base. So if they yeah. come, if they come out with something that is, you know, below average or something that is not well received, I mean, that could be a big hit. For them so mm-hmm. i i think uh it's not a bad idea and house of the dragon is so good right now like we don't we it don't is. need more than than that honestly and i know they've got an animated show in the works that's coming in the next mm-hmm. couple of years so it's like we got enough we got enough game of thrones content though where i mean and granted though same page i would absolutely watch a show with kit harrington regardless if it's game of thrones or not like i, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was fantastic in game of thrones so like if he comes out mm-hmm. with something I'm probably going to be watching it, but yeah, I, yeah, it's not a bad idea to hold off and, and see if they can come up with something a little bit better. If, totally. if Div- Disney gave me just the smallest budget, I would make a, a night in Kings Arthur court or, or Yankee King, make it to where he goes Dude. back in time as the black Knight in Let's medieval go. times. <laughs> and he's playing the black Knight again and give him that damn sword and just let him go off. That'd ah, that would be sick. so freaking cool. Man. Yeah, definitely. Now, no sense in diluting the brand. I mean, I think yeah. even though people are divided on the last season of Game of Thrones, like the quality of Game of Thrones in that universe has maintained. I mean, you you guys both mentioned House of the Dragon. It's phenomenal. So like, yeah, yeah if you don't have a good enough story, don't put it out. Yeah, and, and I actually enjoyed that last season. I understand that it, you know people were divided about it, but I noticed that in House of the Dragons, there's almost like a tepid response to that just because people are maybe you know, hey, don't do Game of Thrones finale again kind of thing. People are <laughs> not approaching it with the same amount of fandom as they have for the other one, mm-hmm. which I think is healthy for the brand as a whole, that we right. don't have this blind loyalty. We saw that happen with Marvel in Phase 4. As much as I still love Marvel all the way through, I could agree that Quantum Mania is a mess. So it's good to see that they're refocusing too. Sometimes yeah. these companies have to catch what we like and don't like. Yeah, oh yeah. Star Wars Outlaw. We got a brand new trailer and a release date. It's coming out August 30th. Now, let's go first off the trailer reaction. This is a great little story. Star Wars Outlaw. Thomas, what do you think? It looks awesome. Like, I've talked about it on another podcast, too. It's like, I just want Red Dead Redemption in a Star Wars universe. <laughs> Don't and it looks like that. What's that? <laughs> so don't go turning me on. Oh. <laughs> that sounds so damn good. <laughs> right. I mean, but doesn't it kind of look like that? We follow it these two characters, now, yeah. right? Like we're going through the galaxy. It looks like you're going to be able to travel through like one planet to another planet. Um, you know, there's going to be different like speeder bikes that you can jump on. It looks badass. I, you know, just give me a good story and let there be some cool weapons I, I'm in like it, it just it's kind of nice too to have somebody who's not like a Jedi or not really tied to the whole like Skywalker saga really um, this character seems like she's just trying to survive and accidentally gets roped into shenanigans so uh, I mean that sounds like a super fun premise and the trailer looks pretty cool so I'm, I'm on board yeah I'm definitely with you there I think uh, there's 
now Star Wars is great when you are focusing on Jedi and all the cool things that they can do. But so much potential is out there for when you're not focusing on the Jedi and the Sith and that whole, you know, area of Star Wars, as we've seen in Andor and Bad Batch the last couple of years. Yeah. Like Preach. there's a whole area of Star Wars that has yet to be explored. And I want to dive deeper into that. And I know like this is many years ago, but like probably seven eight years ago now we had this bounty hunter game that was set to come out i think it was called like 1313 yes. and it was yeah. yeah it was like going to explore kind of like the lower um you know recesses of the star wars universe and kind of get into the dark gritty area that this game kind of looks like it's going to start delving into a little bit so i am all for that also it, it'll be interesting to see how Ubisoft handles it. This is the first non EA Star Wars game for a hot minute. So, yeah, yeah I, I think it'll be really interesting. I'm obviously I'm pretty much all in on anything Star Wars. So, like, <laughs> I'm not going to not get it or, yeah. or play it or anything <laughs> like that. But I'm I'm actually very excited about this just because I, I like the direction that they're heading with it. Uh, they have a formula. Everybody's familiar with the formula. And let's be honest, I freaking love it. I'm keep buying Assassin's Creed and Far Cry's. <laughs> Do you think they'll return to the formula for, for this? And is that a problem or are you okay with it? I think it's fine because we've been getting so much EA uh, you know, over the past whatever. What has it been? Like 10, 10 plus years? It's, like yeah, it's a long, a long time. time. Yeah. So yeah. a break from the EA formula is mm -hmm. going to be it's going to be different it's going to be fine so i i'm excited for it i know there's a lot of people out there that aren't like ubisoft fans necessarily but like can you handle a game any worse than like battlefront 2 was handled by ea i don't really know so i i think ubisoft at, deserves a shot at it for sure and then you know there's going to be a ton of it because i don't think they they have a solid contract with any company coming up after that right so there right. should be games coming out for a long time from a bunch of different companies so I'm, I'm just excited to go into this new area era of like star wars gaming where different yeah. companies can do their different takes on star wars yeah i really like the way that you're kind of pitching this as it's not necessarily it's okay to repeat the ubisoft formula because this is a new formula for star trek so it's gonna be nice to see what Star Trek looks like with this formula. Star Wars, Star Wars, yeah. But I keep you guys are good on this. Yeah, thank you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I'm yeah. Still high on Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> but hey, if we you got a Star fan. Trek game, that might get me into Star Trek. So you know, uh, seriously, there is an OMO yeah. that like, yeah, is pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's been going on for twenty years, and they continue building expansions. It's crazy. Anyways, um, but yeah, so like we have Jedi Fallen Order, which I think is a really good story told through the video game era, and it's so well done that I think they should just make it into a Disney Plus series. And I think this could be that opportunity, too, because ever since the Clone Wars, I was like, man, we needed to learn more about these pirates. And if you have the Hutt, you have all these different factions out there. This could be our in on that. And then maybe we can see them expanded into the, some of the other media, like a comic book for this already feels like it's a no brainer and stuff like, yeah, that, you know, for sure. And I'm like the one thing I'm pulling for that I've been pulling for ever since Clone Wars like came out. I want to see a Hondo Onaka cameo in this game because oh, that would be yeah, jim cummings yeah <laughs> chef's kiss like i love that character so much he so needs much, to be dude. he needs to be brought up in more star wars content <laughs> and jim it. cummings has already come out and said like just give me the avenue just put a mic in front of me i'll be it because he's so i mean that voice is so freaking iconic yeah that iconic. Is, uh, i want it so bad yeah i yeah but i i need a hondo uh cameo in something coming up and this seems like to be the perfect game and avenue for it so that would be fantastic we did actually get a uh, little sneak peek of kira from solo in this trailer that's yes. interesting because talk about a dropped plot i mean we have nothing going on for the solo storyline <laughs> yeah. and they were just like oh here's some darth, darth maul nah we're not gonna do that anymore uh, what <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well forget about that but hey guess what she's in star wars outlaws now <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, okay, well, that, I'm not sad about that because I really did like Solo, actually, despite the kind of drop in <laughs> just Dude, the total, what? total bomb at the end there. And then just like <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Like, back you know what nobody off. talks about is how great Woody Harrelson's char character is in that. It was a great bit. movie. Yeah. Like, it was, it was just yeah. a good, good, solid, fun action flick. I, I love that yeah. one. Yeah. What do you think about this, Thomas? Do you think they could uh, expand on that story? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I'll also like as much as I want Cal Kestis in live action, and I think Cal Kestis should be there. Um, I'm kind of fine with this just being a video game in this universe That's right. that, you know, just kind of gets to play out in the background of the main story that we know. You know, you get little hints at it, like this is what's going on with the rebellion. This is what's been going on with these gangsters and like just a little tidbits of it. So, you know, it's connected to the greater universe. But at the same time, like your character is just responsible for your character and their little slice of life. And I I think they could do that. I mean, it looks looks phenomenal. Um, I I was sitting at San Diego Comic Con and I was talking to you guys about this. Uh, One of the panels, because all the movie studios and all that were on strike, one of the big panels was this game. And they had the writer there and he was talking about every little detail of the story and the amount of depth and the amount of like thought process. I was like, man, this guy's devoted his whole life to just figuring out a good story for this game. And I'm on board with it. It did kind of remind me of Mythic Quest a little bit, though. You know, yeah. where you're like, Absolutely. there's that guy who's a novelist and <laughs> it kind of brought up those emotions a little bit but they were showing some exclusive art from it there was like this game that people like that you could you could jump on and there was a screen behind you and it would record you like you were on the speeder and they had mm. nicks in the background that cute little salamander alien thing um yeah. yeah the fact that you might have a companion that you can use to like get stuff as well just just let it be about that because we see so many other crime syndicates from the opening of the trailer and yeah, just that dark underbelly of the Star Wars universe and you just trying to be somebody who survive to survive is is kind of cool. So, yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just excited to see what they bring up and hopefully again, Red Dead Redemption in the Star Wars universe, I'm good to go. Yeah, when they showed the companion, I was like, "Okay, they're using Far Cry." Cuz you know how it is with Ubisoft and it's like Far Cry, you always have like the eagle that'll go over and kind of spot things for you. Uh the later Assassin's Creed's have been doing that. You could tell that you're going to tell this little lizard dude to go like pick up ammo for you something like that he's gonna have some uses so i'm looking forward to that as well um that'll be good and then yeah the storytelling of video games you're right we don't necessarily need fallen order to become a series because the big benefit to that medium is the fact that you become so much more emotionally attached to the characters to the environment uh one of the most epic video game moments from 2023 was sitting on a bench with an old man in spider-man and just talking about his dating life and stuff like okay it hit me in the heart right yeah Oh, you're yeah. like taking some pigeons across New York and yeah, it's dude. like trying to explain that to people like, oh, yeah, I just cried because I was like with some pigeons today. <laughs> I <laughs> literally <laughs> cried during that right. part. And I was like, this is a like random side mission that you could have yeah. missed. Like, <laughs> yes, you didn't need to do this. But <laughs> yeah, anyways, right. I cried. Yeah, that's why they're the best, though. That's why yeah, it's honestly the best. Like taking those lessons. I hope that they bring it to this game. But it's mm-hmm. just that like build out the characters, make it have some heart. Um, yeah, You know, I think you're right. Fallen Order did have a little bit of that but even more of it in this open world game where you can really explore and maybe you're driving through the desert and you like run up on an alien who needs your help. And you know, their family has been taken away by the empire. I don't know, but I, I, I could see myself crying at that as well, <laughs> but I'm also kind of a cry baby. So there it. you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say speaking of mythic quest, uh, if you guys don't want spoilers, careful, but Rexum just had a very big day today. And so I uh, got a, Watch out for social media. It's pretty cool. I love I love following Rexham the team, but then it spoils Welcome to Rexham the Show for me. So it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> I'm like, oh damn it. <laughs> yeah. no, I know. But it was a pretty awesome day for Rexham. <laughs> that right. show's coming up pretty soon too, the next season of that one. Um, okay, we're moving on to our next thing here. Uh, this is kind of really just cool for myself. Uh Blizzard finally made a deal again with NetEase <clears throat> to bring Blizzard games back to China. So about a year and a half ago, we talked about this on the podcast where You know, there's a very complicated relationship with video games and China and Blizzard lost their contract to be able to sell and use games in China. And what that meant for a lot of communities, especially for World of Warcraft, these 20 year old communities is suddenly that community is gone. There can no longer access the game. That was a year and a half ago. And it was over some money bullshit as as expected. Well, luckily, you know, Microsoft bought um, Blizzard and now Microsoft is, hey, NetEase, let's make a deal. So. What's going to happen now is NetEase is going to have their games on the Xbox platform, and it's going to be easier to put it on Windows. In exchange, Blizzard is back in China. So all our brothers and sisters that are World of Warcraft players or Overwatch players or even out there in Diablo, um, you guys are welcomed back into the family and we're all going to be playing again. So it's just a really cool moment for gaming where the community just, you know, we're welcoming back a whole nother sector. And uh, it's nice when 
it just sucks when something like that happens for business reasons. And then it's just nice to see that like, Hey, it worked out. This big merger has a good shiny side to it. Yeah. It's probably a bummer. Like where, you know, you're just a player then all of a sudden, you, you know, there's a government issue. You have no say in and All of a sudden you just can't play your favorite game that you probably yeah. put so much time into that. It seems wild, but that is the world I guess we live in. Um, a question for you on it though. Cause I saw this was blowing up on Reddit. I think today there was something that the blizzard CEO had said about like he's like man there's so many single player games and they're so fun and in seventy dollars i know that's expensive but there's sometimes the games are so good that i would like to like pay them more money like ten dollars or twenty dollars yeah um what do you what's your take on that comment because <laughs> i saw it literally this morning and i was like people yeah. were pretty mad about this guy saying it so um i'm not necessarily sure exactly uh what they were going with that with comment but I will say, I actually wanted to bring this up with the last thing we we're talking about. I, I forgot about it, so I appreciate you bringing this up again. Um, so, like, for Star Wars Outlaws, it's coming out at 70 bucks for the base game, which is already more than it was before, but it was about that time for it to go up. There's a whole debate we've had in the past where it's like, well, they're not doing physical copies as much anymore, so really the cost is negated. Nevertheless, gold edition, $110. So, like, damn, that's oh. a lot for gold. Uh, yeah, it goes more. Now, Whoa. for Ultimate Edition, is $130. For the game. What? what do you get in the ultimate edition? Do they like send two like a, a speeder to your house? <laughs> two more costumes. Two more costumes. That's, That's it. it. That's it. How hard? What are there? Are there like three costumes in the whole game? It's like, single there's no way it justifies that. Shit, like it's not like you can brag about you spending more money. It's just for you. So yeah, right. it's two more costumes See, and speeder. That's a costumes. whole other game almost that you're buying. That's yeah. that's wild. That's crazy. When Ubisoft heard the backlash from this, guess what they said? Oh, don't worry. There's Ubisoft Plus. It'll be available there for $18 a month. <laughs> that was not the right answer because you don't own the game if you do that. And so people were just like, I'll wait for Black Friday. And that's been kind of the saying is I'll wait for Black Friday now with Ubisoft. And so Ubisoft's like, that sucks. <laughs> so now everybody's like, because it's coming out in August. So if you guys know, like Guardians of the Galaxy is a really good example of this when that game came out. People just waited for Black Friday on that one, too. And it was like, came out $70, eh, not really worth that. 20 bucks for Black Friday. That's where it's worth it, you know? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And then so you said because Guardians of the that. Galaxy is a fantastic game. But totally. It really is. It was just like, it came out, it was competing as too many good games, yeah, and it was just, right. you know, odd man bad out. bad timing. Bad timing, yeah. Uh, yeah, so for as for the, the Blizzard CEO saying that, I definitely see a place where, you know, if you're adding enough value, paying more for the game is worth it. But we're having this tricky situation where if you're going to be de- using more employee time to develop the game more, why is that not going into the base game? And then right. the early access thing just kind of, for being honest, feels shitty. Like, why are you going to give us three days early and I got to pay more money for that? That doesn't seem worth it. I don't know. What are right. your thoughts on that? No, yeah, I agree with you. You're just buying extra time to, you know, play the game, which I'm such a sucker. And if I really like the game, I want it because- uh, you know, especially if all my friends are going to get it, I would like to be three, four, five levels higher than them. Yeah. So, you know, I could be like, oh, let me show you how it's done. And yeah. also, if it's a really good game, I just want to play it early. So it is. It feels like it's really weird. I, I think the online consensus on those comments were like, of course, like if you're a multimillionaire, paying extra 10 to 20 dollars is like paying like, you know, one to two cents. That was a comment from somebody. I don't know if the math checks out. But anyways, that was <laughs> like the top comment right but yeah I, I don't know i think it is funny he does bring up and i'll, I'll send it to you but he yes, he brings up like all the different um games that blizzard is in charge of and how it would be nice if people could also pay extra for those things and i don't know if that sit r- sits right but we've been seeing a lot of drama kind of in the video game industry this year and uh yeah it seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between the top upper upper people who run these companies and some of the people who are are working away, you know the devs, the the game testers, all these people who are like working their butts off for you know a basic paycheck, you know, it's still probably pretty yeah. good for the rest of the world, but not making millionaire money. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. So hopefully, some of these video game companies start waking up to what the consumers are saying, but also like mm-hmm. we vote with our dollars in this situation. So yeah, you know. I think we're seeing a shift in the video game industry, but is it a big enough shift to make them stop? I don't know. I think that's, it's too soon to tell, but I, I don't want to pay. I'm not paying $130 for Star Wars Outlaw. Like that's not yeah, too crazy. No. I, I'll yeah. for Black Friday as well, probably. But I, I do think there is a shift in just the economics of the situation in the industry as a whole, especially over the last 25, 30 years, where in the nineties, when a new game came out, you just bought the new game. It didn't kill you. 
And nowadays, um, the consumers, the age of those consumers, their budget's different than it was for the same age in the 90s. And so for a game to come out, I, World of Warcraft's a great example of this, right? Because when they announced the collector's edition, it's like, yeah, whatever price it is, I know I'm going to buy it because it's the three days early. Like for us, it's a multiplayer game. We're not going to not have that access. So that's going to be purchased. But we also spend $15 a month on that game, stuff like that. So the commitment to money that we get out, it's still, it's better. But um, it's a bigger chunk of your your income. So it has to be a bigger chunk of your uh, entertainment. And that's not always the case. And sometimes we don't have the time to sing 60 hours into a game either way. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I think there's a little bit of a disconnect, like you're saying, like these rich people, not necessarily rich people, but these bosses or whatever, don't quite get how much of a chunk of our income it is sometimes for these big fat games and how much that has to entertain us then as much as TikTok does, because TikTok's right. free. Fortnite is kind of just basically free. So you have to beat those and they're not doing it sometimes. They're not doing it without law right now. I'm not as excited anymore with those prices. Good call out. Yep, I agree. Well said. Yeah. But that being said, again, welcome back, China. <laughs> it is cool. I, I, you know, being a player of that game for 20 years to think that, like, you just find out, you know, hey, next week you're not going to have access to your characters. That freaking sucks. Because that's oh, your man. friends that you hang out with. I have made so many friends through that game that only met through that game. And to think, like, hey, you're not going to be able to hang out with your friends on that game anymore. Just It just kind of sucks. Yeah, to your one listener out there who agrees with me, that's how I felt about the Avengers game. You know, it's gone <laughs> hey. too soon. Oh, Love no. The Avengers game again was very good. Just what a bad end game. They, they didn't plan that Ter- out too well. You're so right. Yep. All right, let's get into CinemaCon. Uh, as a whole, first off, where the hell is our invite to CinemaCon, guys? We got to start emailing <laughs> people. <laughs> Seriously. Come on, don't we know somebody who knows somebody who could get us in there? And we'll promote right. the movies. Um, yeah, it, it was it looked incredible. It looks so good. Yeah, it looks sweet. There's so many big things that happened. And I'm like, man, just imagine sitting there when that thing gets announced and everybody just loses their minds. Like, oh, uh, that would be so much fun. Yeah. What I love, too, is like from the footage of the play, like we've been to so many conventions and where announces because this is an industry event. It's morphed a lot, but it is an industry event. But you see everybody with their laptops out. I love that because it's like that vibe is so nice because there's been countless times where I'm sitting at a BlizzCon or at a Comic-Con and I've got my phone taking pictures and tweeting them as fast as I can. But the people around me are just excited in the moment. It would be nice to be in a room where everybody's dealing with the stress I'm dealing with. <laughs> like, gotta yeah. tweet this son of a bitch. <laughs> <You know? laughs> totally. Everybody's in the same boat as you. But the other side to it, too, I saw a ton of YouTubers, podcasters, yeah. all of that. I mean, people who do major coverage at major news organizations and like, to see how how excited they were made me so excited because it's like they talk about this stuff all the time and the fact that they were like god the footage from deadpool wolverine was incredible or like the disney presentation or did you see what paramount's coming out with like they were so excited it made me more fired up for what's coming out um yeah i don't know that's one of the big things that's that's a difference because of the industry aspect of this instead of showing a super polished trailer that has to go through all kinds of testing groups they just show, you know, 15 minutes of this movie. That's a whole different way of doing it. Do you think that's something they should try with the regular public? Or is that just like, that eh, might be a little bit too much information for us. What do you think? I think that's too much information because I feel like trailers nowadays, as it is, have been giving us way more information in the past, I don't know, five, ten years or something like that. That's it's yeah. like you can almost watch a trailer for a new movie and kind of know the whole plot of the movie. Uh, totally. especially with the second trailer, like they come out with the teaser trailer. Usually yeah. that one's not so bad. They, they'd show a little bit like some really cool clips and stuff like that. The second trailer that comes out, like you could almost guess the whole plot of the movie from that second trailer usually. So yeah. I'm okay with not seeing 15 minutes of the movie because that might lessen my want to go see that movie. Maybe. I don't know. I don't That's know. Fair. But uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with just seeing a little snippet if I get caught on that little snippet, boom, I'm in. I don't need to see any more after I'm in, you know, just, just give me right. that little bit that draws me in. Yeah. I always say, man, just show me enough in the trailer to get me hooked. Once I'm hooked, mm-hmm. I don't need to see anything else because I'm going to the movie. So yeah, I, yeah, weirdly, I don't know if this is maybe a hot take, but I felt like that a little bit into the fallout series up until the last episode where I was like, I saw so much of this that I thought was really cool 
but I kind of knew where it was going because I saw it in the trailer. Um, but yeah, don't don't show us everything. It's cool for the industry people to like tease it out to us lonely people at the bottom. We're just like <laughs> fighting for little breadcrumbs. But d- yeah, like, yeah, just Honestly, again, I think no. that's fine, because like, especially with this Deadpool and Wolverine stuff that we're going to talk about, like mm-hmm. y- we get just like the little transcript of what happened and everybody yeah. in the Internet is losing their minds like, <laughs> yeah. like worse. Yeah just pumped about this right like so yeah that's fine show 15 minutes half an hour show the whole movie to the people at CinemaCon and let them tell us about it so we can get excited for it you know like i'm fine with that i just don't want to see it on the internet where i accidentally see something that i didn't really want to and then that kind of like drops my excitement for it yeah let's start with that deadpool and wolverine yeah they showed they showed footage they show a whole scene and what we hear is basically Wade Wilson's a used car dealership salesman. I'm loving that. Kevin Feige came out spicy. He told everybody, put your fucking phones away. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that's the, the, I like how Deadpool has not been, I think, dampened by the Disney brand. And I think that was one of our biggest concerns going into this. It feels like it's still as hot as usual. I, I just think it's so funny that people were saying that. It's like, why? They, why would it be dampened because Disney owns it? Like, I don't think really anything's been watered down. And mm-hmm. like Infinity War was still incredible. Endgame was still immensely impactful. Avatar, like why would any of this stuff change just because Disney owns Deadpool now? Like I, it just didn't make any sense to me. And also like if we know Kevin Feige or if you know anything about his past, like he respects the source material. He respects what works about those movies and shows. He's a true cinema fan at his heart. Like why would he take any of that away for Deadpool. And so it just thought, I just like thought that was such a funny criticism online. I never thought it would be the case. And it, it, I guess it's good to have reassurance that it's not, but I mean, Ryan Reynolds is being Ryan Reynolds. He's allowing yeah. Hugh Jackman to be the Logan in a sense that we saw, but also like, you know, a part of Wolverine that we've never saw in the old Fox movie. So Dude, I, yeah, this looks exciting. Oh, man, the the meta humor, the the violence, the the cursing, like all this stuff. Uh, it just feels right. It feels like, yeah, Deadpool's yeah, home. It's it's fantastic. And like you said, Ryan Reynolds is he's just running with this, which as yeah. he should, because like if you're <laughs> yeah. not fully committed to the bit of being Deadpool, you should not be Deadpool. So so he <laughs> yeah. is picking that up and running with it. I'm going to push back a little bit on what you said though about the the like the violence stuff and how how we all were like oh my gosh is disney gonna be able to like pull this off i think if if we go back and we look at some of those disney plus shows man if we had a tvma moon knight that would have made that show better yes if we had a tvma hawkeye that probably would have made that show better so i and we got to see a little snippet of that Mm -hmm. in echo Right. Like we did get to see a TVMA Disney Plus show. But back when, you know, Endgame was over and we were like, what what is happening? Like, what is the direction of the MCU? And because of that kind of like family friendly vibe that they kind of put out, that's what they tried to stick with initially. Obviously, we're going to be getting like Daredevil, you know, born again in the next coming years. That's going to be TVMA and stuff like that, too. I think there was some valid concern for that, but they are handling it very well. And I think Ryan Reynolds is a big part of that, too. Like, I don't think he would sign on to a project that doesn't do that Deadpool character full justice. I I, don't, I think he would fight for it or just not even like be a part of it at all. So Ryan Reynolds really has pulled through and getting Hugh Jackman to come back as Wolverine for this is just I mean, it's genius. Like the dude, the dude absolutely has made everybody want to see this movie, regardless if you are a fan of Deadpool or not. Like this is how you get people in the theaters to see Deadpool and Wolverine is get Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. And and they did it. So there you go. So many great points there. I want to double down as on another part, too. After the uh, shift in ownership. They re-released Deadpool 2 in theaters. What was that PG version? You remember the Christmas yeah, edition? Yeah, the PG-13 that version. Yeah, yeah. Made me very concerned. I was kind of like, wait, is this kind of the vibe for all of this going forward? And then also, <sighs> how often does Marvel let somebody break the fourth wall? Before She-Hulk, I didn't think that was really a big possibility for the MCU because it was something so 
different, unique, pioneering for them to allow that to happen felt like it might not happen. Then, you know, She-Hulk shattered it. But um, before that, it was a little bit concerning. Uh, one of the things I, I, boy, I'm just already a big fan of, and I know that we're going to have to find a way to give one away a challenge accepted, are the new popcorn buckets that are designed by <laughs> Deadpool, quote unquote. <laughs> have you guys seen these these popcorn buckets? Wait, they are came those... out with images? I, I didn't know they oh, yeah. came out with images. I didn't know if they were oh, real. Like, I, I knew Boss Logic posted some, and I thought oh, that's, maybe I it was just him having fun. Ones. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And IGN did uh, AI ones. That's not right. But the one where the mouth is on the side, have you seen that one? I don't know if that's yeah, the Boss that's Logic the one. Boss Logic that's a Boss Logic one, yeah. Apparently, that's real. What? what? No that's way. That's crazy. Yeah, I, that's th- I totally thought that was just <laughs> Boss Logic coming up with some random was junk. Something ridiculous? Yeah, me <laughs> yeah. too. That's I, actually I hilarious, wrong, though. <laughs> but from what I understand, Van, you know, uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds is sharing it. So I believe that is the real one. Yes. Hmm. Ryan Reynolds has been hot on social media today. It's been a big day for he, wow. It's also uh, Rob uh, McAhenney's birthday. So I don't know if you guys saw anything with that, but he, I'll just, real quick, side note, um, you know, they, they both have the Wrexham team, but he ended up commissioning like a Titanic paint picture of him like naked uh dance music, or paint me you know like your french girls and so <laughs> not only did he put a bunch of merch out with all of rob on there naked but also <laughs> it's now in the rexa museum oh my gosh <laughs> that's, oh that's my. amazing that's so awesome. he's been on fire on social media today. It's been a very big day for him. Gosh, I gotta, I gotta start watching that Wrexham show because, like, how fun would that franchise be? Like, just to be a part of yeah. that. Yeah. Totally, it it I, looks amazing. It is so good, and I, as soon as I started watching, I tried to buy one of the um, jerseys, and they just sold out immediately. And so, yeah, it's Dang. it's hard to get a jersey now. I want one of the old blue t- uh, before TikTok ones, um, but they're hard to find now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We see our first look at Harrison Ford as uh, Thaddeus Ross, and uh, you know what? He looks pretty good. He looks pretty spry for his age. I thought he looked pretty good. I'm a little concerned with how much he doesn't care about his roles anymore. But overall, like he doesn't need to be. It's Ross. He's a, he's a grumpy old man. It kind of mm. fits. So it works it well. It fits Harrison Ford very well. Grumpy old yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's the role that he nails every single time. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're you're just now president. So just imagine that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I love it. I, I love the idea of Red Hulk. I mean, again, how could you, you can't top Harrison Ford. I mean, we, going back to Solo, he, that was the hardest part for me with that actor was like, he's great. He's doing a good Han Solo, but he's not Harrison Ford. And so yeah. I feel like the guy's kind of irreplaceable in some ways. Um, but I'm just curious to see how he looks in the movie, especially when he gets to the Red Hulk part, if they're going to go yeah. with it. Like, how is he actually going to move around and stuff? I don't know. But um, I, I think he's going to be a perfect counter to Sam Wilson's Captain America. So I'm, I'm stoked about it. I, I, I feel like I had the same concerns, Frank, that you just mentioned with him being just a grumpy old man and like all of his roles and like how much he's committed to those roles until I watched Shrinking on Apple Shrinking. TV+. Plus. Yeah. Uh, dude nails it in that show. And yeah. he is granted he is a grumpy old man in that show. But he also towards the end of the show, like, I mean, you see his soft side and he is fantastic in that show. So he that show made me realize, like, dude, still got something left in the tank. And I am excited to see him as and if you're going to get like like we already kind of talked about it, if you're going to get a grumpy old man to play like Red Hulk, Thunderbolt Ross, like. Harrison Ford's the best grumpy old man you could get out there. So <laughs> yeah. I, I'm all in. I And I love Harrison Ford. So I'm 100% all in on him as Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially shrieking with him taking the edibles and getting all silly. And like, <laughs> you're like, good. all right, if he's yeah. going for it and he's doing that now, like he, he, he still has range. Oh yeah. I, st- I seriously got to watch that show. I haven't it's, watched it yet. Yeah, it's very good. So definitely. good. Apple TV I, plus has so many good shows, dude. Like it's, oh, that's dude. such a good platform. Uh, yeah, I always recommend yeah. that to people because like, I mean, Ted Lasso is like an absolute must watch. Like that's number one show that you guys got to watch right now. Uh, Shrinking is great. Uh, the good Mor- the morning show uh, with yeah. uh, yeah. Reese Witherspoon and uh, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Fantastic. Like there's so many great shows on Apple TV Plus. Definitely. Mm-hmm. If you guys have access to like a three month like free trial. Oh, and Severance too. Severance. Oh, Severance. Severance. and for all mankind i want to throw that one in there oh, too for all mankind 
you just like I'm gonna just keep listing off these shows that <laughs> I love. Just love. Well, like, yeah. but nobody but talks about it because it's like Apple TV. So who's good. got that? It's like they're so good. Like yeah, it. abs. If you guys get a chance to do a three like month free trial or something, take it and just binge as much as you can. And I yeah. guarantee you that you will be paying for Apple TV Plus after that free trial is up because there's just so much good content on that platform. The second Severance comes back, I'm just like, here's my money again. That that show oh, had me so much. So good. Yeah, and so I do need to watch Drinking, but I, I will say I've seen a lot of interviews about the filming of that, especially from the other cast that's in the show with him. And a lot of it was, you know, he read the script and just fell in love with it. So it's nice to see that Harrison Ford found a project he loved. And I was like, all right, 100% on that one. So I'm hoping he still has that passion for something like this. Mm -hmm. I, you know, he'll do the good job. They'll motion cap his He doesn't really need to be on set for the actual Hulk right. part. Yeah. And um, it's not like that person has a lot of character anyways. Like Red Hulk's just going to smash things. So. <laughs> yeah. Next up, we have uh, the Thunderbolts. And the main thing that we need to talk about is it's now Thunderbolts with an asterisk. What does that mean? That was a very interesting um, addition uh, to that title. And part of me wonders if, they put that there because the actual title of the movie is not going to be Thunderbolts. Yeah. I thought about that after, after I saw the announcement and, and maybe it fully will be Thunderbolts asterisk and they'll change the name of the team at the end of the movie or something, you know, in the, in the movie, like the, maybe they'll go with like a dark Avengers type of stuff or something like That's that. That's a fan theory right now. Yeah. But like, I, I almost wonder if they're not going to call it Thunderbolts anymore. I, I don't know, man. I, I it thought it was a very interesting addition to uh, from <laughs> from everything we've heard about this movie kind of seems like it's just a melting pot of everything. And I don't know what shape it's going to take at this point. So I don't know. It'll be really interesting to see what plays out. Yeah, I, I think that name doesn't stick through the end of the movie. Much like we got Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think by the end of it, you know, you're going to get that reveal that's going to be like Cap. And the Winter Soldier by the end, I think their name changes because if you look at the team too, it's not like they're all villains, which was very much the case kind of from the comics. So this, this to me, like it kind of screams that it's the Thunderbolts for now. And, you know, but I could yeah. see it at some point by the end where, where Val comes out or whoever, and then the, she decides like, oh no, this is the new, uh, whatever, Dark Avengers or whatever. So I, I could see them changing it by the end of the movie. Yeah, and it's interesting how it's going to tie with the with the other movie because we know that Harrison's asking Captain to make a new Avengers. So after the events of that movie, does that not work out? So do they have to then make a different Avengers team maybe that's not tied to the, or that is more tied to the United States government, which is what Thunderbolts would kind of be. And then, so there's Dark Avengers, maybe West Coast Avengers, something like that. It would be, I'm trying to think of what other names would be used outside of Thunderbolts. Yeah. There's another form of Avengers. Not, I was think, yeah. For some reason, I have West Coast stuck in my brain, but that's not it. Yeah. But there's a, <laughs> a another team of Avengers that's not the Dark Avengers, and I could see them going that route too. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't think it stays the Thunderbolts the whole time. Also, yeah. like there has to be some type of Val interplay here, and if it's not Thunderbolts, Thunderbolt Ross who's putting the team together, or Sam Wilson. And Val's in play, like, would she still call him the Thunderbolts? I don't see how that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah I, I think it changes at some point before the ending of the movie. Val's so smart. I could see her just using the Thunderbolts, because I have a feeling Ross dies at the end of the, Falcon, of the, I'm sorry, the Captain America movie. So then you name them Thunderbolts after the guy, kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, this is how we're going to get government funding from the U.S. Like, you guys want an American Avengers, you know? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that kind of feels like Val's PR move. But she's so smart, and I would love for a solid reveal somewhere that she's just a straight-up nice guy. I know that might not be comic book accurate, but it'd be really nice to have Val come out and say, like, look, I had to work in the shadows to give you this. A very Black Widow way of doing things, where she maybe does make, um, you know, an under-the-radar Avengers team or something like that, a ground-level Avengers team, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I... I don't know, but we'll we'll find out. And uh, yeah. yeah, the Thunderbolts is is a tricky one. We saw so much too from Florence Pugh. Funny enough, on her like personal video, <laughs> I love that. It. I feel yeah. like she showed the most about this movie <laughs> than anything at CinemaCon or anything from Marvel. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know even know what this movie's about. Like, I don't even know if the team's still the same team that they showed at 
Comic-Con two years ago. It could be completely different. Like, yeah, I think after, uh, what is it? Captain America, Brave New World. I think it's going to reveal a lot about this movie. And, you know, I think the asterisk might even be there because post Captain America, Brave New World, maybe that title that changed changes so yeah. I, I don't know. yeah see. That, that that could be it yeah because that's i mean what that's a, like a month uh space between brave new world and thunderbolts if I'm remembering yeah. correctly. it's within the same year i think so yeah, yeah. it's um this it's uh, this article i've away, got baby. says that it's okay it's february and may so it is a couple months yeah. space it's, it's, in between it's, it's, oh, okay pretty close honestly for marvel uh, yeah. right now right now anyways oh, they, did they move it up to may because last time i heard was thunderbolts was going to be december was that supposed to be December this year? Uh, and then they pushed uh, it back. Yeah, and then it moved February, back to May so, yeah, 2nd, I think 2025. They did move uh, up again. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I missed that. Um, yeah, so I wonder if the asterisk came in after, because there's that shift in tone that we're seeing, you know, we've talked about in the past, echo shift, you know. Um, so I almost feel like that asterisk is like, yeah, we feel it. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're refilming a lot of dead, uh, uh, um, Daredevil stuff like that. Throw an asterisk on that one. We'll fix that later on. It kind of feels a little bit like that, too. Yeah. 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 Everything's got an asterisk we... on it now. <laughs> Everything yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Kang shift. Like, Kang was going to be involved in that. Get that. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else from Disney you guys want to make sure to bring up? I know we're getting a little long in the tooth here. Um, Inside Out 2, they showed 30 minutes of that. That's so freaking cool. Anything mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then a lot of people were just talking about how. The special effects in Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, like it's surpassed what they even thought it was going to be. So I, I think we were already on board with watching it, but I think that's a day one watch for me now. It just seems so amazing. And like the yeah. director talking about it, like using a CGI company who's the best in the world and they're doing stuff that's never been done before in any movie. Like I, I'm super sold on that on that movie. I am, too. I'm not sold yeah. on the Mufasa movie. I think I'll skip that one. Yeah, I gotta I was, see a trailer. Yeah, I was talking to somebody else about this. I'm like, I, I, I guess I get why they're doing it because the Lion King live action made like what 1.6 billion dollars or something like that. But John Favreau, who, man, who in the world was asking for a Mufasa origin movie? Like, I just, <laughs> I just don't understand who was on the board and was like, you know what, we should do. Yeah, let's do a Mufasa origin movie. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's let's roll with yeah. it. I, I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, why not yeah. just make a sequel to The Lion King if it was that big and you want to continue the brand? I I don't know. Totally. Just yeah. just weird. But I yeah, I don't even know what the story would be. We'll have to see. But yeah, you know it's gonna make over a billion dollars either way. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably. gonna be just yeah, one of those yeah. things. I will say I do like the director too. He did this movie called Moonlight and it won an Academy yeah. Award and. It was like a, an incredible movie. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It will probably be talking about you know, movie of the year or something like that. Surprise us. I've heard, and I've <laughs> never seen it either, but I've heard people say that that Mowgli movie that's like a spinoff from the live action Jungle Book. I've heard people say that that movie is pretty solid, actually. So I don't it? know. Maybe, maybe they can pull it off, but I, I don't have high hopes for it. Probably not going to see it in the theater. <laughs> yeah. 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 I definitely wait for Disney. Same. Mm hmm. Uh, let's move over to Joker to uh, Thomas. We reviewed Joker one on challenge accepted. We really went in, in depth on that. And now that we have a trailer for this one, is there any takeaways that you're taking from this kind of shaping what this might look like? Yeah, this is great. I mean, you throw in Lady Gaga in this, who's an incredible talent as a musician, but also like blossoming as a movie star. Like mm -hmm. this looks um, weirdly like it, tantalizing. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it beyond that. Like, uh, it just seems like they're gonna have this crazy dynamic literally as the Joker and Harley Quinn do. But, um, yeah, I, I wasn't super high even on the first Joker, you know, like I didn't really care to watch it when it was theaters, but I'm like, I'm not going to not watch a Batman thing. And, yeah. uh, that movie really surprised me. I liked it even more when we reviewed it on challenge accepted. So bringing her into the fold and then finding his dance partner, I find, I think is a really interesting concept for them to explore. So I'm there. Yeah. And then it looks like we have the delusional state that's going to play a big part of it. Like it looks like in their delusion, they're both high on life and then they're both kind of sitting next to each other in a jail cell so type of thing. Yeah. Um, just on that, what you just said, that makes sense because if this is a musical, there's always in a musical, there's always that interlude of like dream sequence or something like that. Mm -hmm. Totally makes sense. And I, honestly, this trailer made me, give this a little bit more leeway because when I heard that Joker two was going to be a musical, I was like, what the heck are they oh. doing? Todd Phillips, what are you doing? 
Joker 2 was a phenomenal movie, very dark and heavy. And how are you going to pivot, turn this around into a musical? I just don't understand the vision. I don't see it. But after that trailer, I kind of do. And I, I still yeah. don't know if I'm 100% sold on this movie, uh, but it looks weirdly beautiful in in the same sense that you kind of got in Joker. Like in Joker, you obviously see that he's descending into, you know, uh, a crazy person. But there's also this kind of like sense of beauty around it, like that he's kind of, I guess, accepting himself for who he is, you know, like yeah. Yeah. oddly, you know, uh, but I kind of got that same vibe with this trailer. So it's going to be weird. It's going to be creepy. It's going to be dark. But I think it might be good, <laughs> actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I took away from it that I was very unhappy about, not well, very, might be a little bit. But anyways, um, Harley Quinn, it looks like she's a patient and not a doctor. Right. And yeah. that's, that's one of my point. favorite things is that she falls in love with a patient and he manipulates her down to his, like, it's part of the messed up foundation right. of that terrible, terrible relationship. Yeah. This that's kind of right. like part of the character of Harley Quinn is that she's got Stockholm syndrome. Yes. For mm -hmm. the Joker. And I don't, I don't necessarily see, I mean, maybe that still could be replicated somehow, but it's not going to be the same, uh, you know, type of relationship as they had in, the animated series or, you know, in, in any comic material that we've gotten afterwards. So it'll be interesting that I did notice that too, and not thrilled about that, but at mm -hmm. the same time, they're kind of giving an origin story to something that's not really touched on a lot in the comics. Like, I mean, yeah. Joker, that that's kind of like the thing about Joker is that he's this very mysterious, like origin story, you know, and, and, and we, we kind of get one um eventually you know in, in the comics but at the same time like that that's kind of the part of his aura is that you don't know anything about this guy so they're kind of going at it a different angle i think it'll still be good but yeah i, I did notice that and is like a little bit of a bummer because that's part of what makes harley quinn like such a interesting character but we'll we'll see how that all plays out but i mean if you're going to get somebody to play Harley Quinn in a musical, you can't really go wrong with Lady Gaga. Like she, right. she right. looks right. like she's gonna be phenomenal. And that last yeah. scene in that trailer where they're sitting on opposite sides of the glass, she writes the smiley face, and uh, you know, Joaquin yes. Phoenix like goes into it and smiles like perfectly. I mean, mm -hmm. this is gonna be a beautifully shot movie. Yeah. So like, even if you don't like musicals or don't like the heavy dark themes. I mean, at least you can appreciate the cinematography, which is going to be phenomenal. Like it was in the first one. So, you know, there's a lot of different angles to come at this one. I'm really hoping that the, the Arkham Asylum is the villain, right? And I think it will be right. Like it's not gonna be this love story. And if it's Arkham Asylum, that's the villain. I hope that we get Hugo strange and like, maybe there is corrupt doctors that are making things worse. Joker's never going to be a good guy, but like with Joker one, the villain was Gotham City in a way, Thomas Wayne, because he wasn't doing quote, you know, enough basically and, you know, abandoned uh, Arthur's mom. So I'm hoping in this one, we get like Hugo Strange, which will seem like a sympathetic character at first, but then we learn as part of the machinery and he's making things worse. That'd be really nice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What if Joker turns Harley into somebody who then becomes a patient? In a way, I don't know. Or yeah, yeah. maybe Arkham Asylum turns her into a patient from a doctor. Like, I don't know. I, that, that stuff was popping up in my head a little bit too. Yeah, definitely. It, it is, and that's the thing too, is, is I think uh, I'm personally really, they, they've taken Harley Quinn's character recently in all of DC properties in such a different way, very much like post Joker life. Right. So mm -hmm. to step back so far, it, it's a little jarring, right? To go back yeah. to, that totally. relationship in the very beginning because now we're at the point where she's like ditching joker and in the harley quinn series it's really good the animated series on hbo yeah um, does that you know yeah. uh let's go to the paramount which paramount just again like i said earlier kicked the doors open and was showing things off oh god this is so beautiful we have the last ronin a teenage mutant ninja turtle live action r-rated movie in the works um i'm really 
I know that they're going to go CGI, but boy, could you imagine if they actually did the actual big Muppet looking guys we got from the 90s? I would be <laughs> so would be damn wild. happy for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thomas, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this one? On it being a practical suit? No, they shouldn't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and, no, I'm stoked about it. I, I love this story. Uh, I, I read, I don't know, I didn't read the whole run, but I read like the first like four or five issues. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's so heartbreaking. It's so sad. I mean, we're just talking about the Joker, and I might, I might say like the last Ronin might be up there with it. Just mm-hmm. the way that the you know, I don't want to give away who the last Ronin is, right. but um, what happens to this character and what happens to like the rest of his brothers and the world that the TMNT are in? It's like it's really devastating, and it kind of goes a little bit more cyberpunk in a way. So I, I think there's a ton they can do with this. Um, I don't know. Are we still getting the video game as well? We are. Yeah. Oh my God. They're going all in on the last Ronin. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully it pays off, but I'm excited about it. I love TMNT. So th- yeah, more of it's the better. It's, it's more so it's crazy that TMNT has become so mainstream that we're getting the storyline in like, you know, big games and movies now. Like it, it, that's just kind of mind blowing to me. That I mean, it's True. fantastic because I mean, it, they're really fun characters. It's a fun universe. It's it's just great. But man, to think that from this, you know, animated show from the comics before that, obviously, but from you know, a indie company came this amazing IP that is now like household names yeah. is is just phenomenal to think about. But yeah, I'm excited for this, obviously as well. It's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. We look at so many properties that they just bring back for almost no reason, or maybe they recycle a little bit too hard with like Transformers or whatever, which we're going to talk about in a sec. But this one, they, they nail it, right? Because they take chances in all the right ways. We had the recent Mutant Mayhem that was like, oh, cool art style, a little bit of Spider-Man. Uh, this one, it's like, hey, here's your adult tone. We're going full adult tone. And they just give you what you want. And the adult tone of The Last Roman Ronin is very reminiscent of the original, original comic books back in the old days. Um, and so it really kind of gives you everything you want. I just, I think this is going to be cool. And I mean, it's more team NT. It's going to be really fun for us to join along. We have the GI Joe and transformers combo movie here. Uh, I, I just never thought this would ever happen. So I'm so excited. Yeah. I look, man, I have basically no horse in this race because I stopped watching the transformers movies a long time ago. Yeah. Didn't really grow up on the cartoons and stuff like that. G.I. Joe have seen the the one movie that came out. Didn't uh, there's a Snake Eyes movie out there too, right? Like never yeah. saw that. You don't like, have to watch I, that. I've got there's like a sequel to G.I. Joe movie too, actually. With is the there? Rock. I didn't even know yeah. that. So there you, you don't go. Have to watch like, that I got one either. no horse in this race, but like yeah. I'm happy for everybody that is fans of these franchises because it looks like it's just going to be a good time. So all right, yeah. uh, you know, kudos to you guys who are going to enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. So, definitely. so I will say the Beast Wars movie that came out was actually one of the better ones. Like I haven't really watched all of them all the way through like first weekend, but I have watched them and mm-hmm. Beast Wars was actually pretty good. And then there was a little bit of a teaser at the end. Spoiler alert right. for this movie that came out last year. Sorry, everybody. But there was a teaser to the G.I. Joe program. So right. it makes sense that they're making this movie. Um, I have a lot of love for this like just about the time i started collecting comic books and x-men stuff my grandpa started sending me a gi joe so i would get a gi joe for my birthday and i would get a gi joe for christmas and i still have them in the boxes some almost 30 years later so yeah they're worth nothing but i wish i wish they were (laughs) but whatever um so i've held on to these things for so long and i've wanted gi joe to be done right for so long i'm happy transformers had their time in the sun that you know the shia era with megan fox some of those movies were awesome there was like you know the mark Wahlberg phase but i think beast wars is bringing it back just Bumblebee do G.I. Joe's right. Just real quick, the Bumblebee kind of soft reboot. Oh, Bumblebee was, was yeah. solid. Fantastic. I, I saw that yeah. one. That movie was, was great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That movie was great. So why can't they do that with G.I. Joe's? You know, it's it's hard, I, I think, in a sense, because it's like, you, you know, there's guns and there's like that kind of violence. But I think there's a way they can spin it in a world where we have Star Wars and, and all these Marvel movies. So, man, make the G.I. Joe movie good. I, I, I really, really, <laughs> really... I'm most excited about this out of everything from Paramount and I want it to be good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one the most. 
it just makes too much sense in my opinion. Going back to that Mark Wahlberg era, it was trash, right? I mean, I remember very well they had John Goodman playing one of the robots and he had a beard and a, and a cigar. I'm just like, but why? Like that makes no damn sense. But then you had a bunch of humans that were involved that were like also superhuman. Like they were just a little bit too strong to be rolling with, with robots. Why not make them just GI Joes? Then all of a sudden it makes yeah. a bunch of sense that they would be rolling with the robots. So I, I think it makes sense. And to me, it feels like whoever's in charge of these movies just had the action figures and are smashing them against each other right now. <laughs> and like, oh, you kissing over here. Like, it's that kind of thing again. I would not be surprised if a Power Ranger pops up somewhere. I'm on board. Ooh, it's just fireworks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, with all the success of Mattel, with Barbie and all the stuff they're launching, yeah. like, come on, Hasbro. Like, you have, you've had this universe going for so long. Like, do, do it right. Yeah, that'll be good. Next up and last up for CinemaCon, we have the Avatar announcement. So uh, Avatar Studios is making, they're expanding the world of Avatar through the actual original creators. And they have a new movie coming up called Aang, The Last Airbender. It'll be coming out in 2025. We know that we have uh, two new actors joining the field. So uh, we have Dave Bautista, who's going to be playing the villain. I don't care what that character is. I'm already in love with him. And <laughs> that's just right <laughs> off the bat. And playing Aang is Eric Nam. So uh, adding some real talent to this, expanding into uh, Aang's adulthood. I think this is just a slam dunk all the way around. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm excited for it. I mean, I to be completely honest, I I'd love the original animated show. I've not watched The Legend of Korra, uh, but that's a universe that I want to keep diving into. So I will yeah. get around to that eventually. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm all in for more Avatar stuff because that universe rocks. So give it to me. Yeah. Have you read the comics at all, Isaac? I have not. No. Very well done. They're very good. Yeah. They're, they're, you know they, what? I think I have one from a free comic book day one time, and I okay. I did get. I was like, oh, you know what? Like this is not not as bad as I expected it to be because yeah. a lot of times you go to those comic uh, versions of you know shows that are already out or oh, movies yeah. or whatever, and it's just like mm, this is not what I wanted from this. <laughs> but yeah, this and gargoyles yeah. do well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they actually, you're best off buying them in the compendiums because it's complete stories and then they just jump to another timeline right. and it's a complete story again. So they don't necessarily connect at all. You know, yeah. like that's a lot of people's favorite avatar. Why not give a continued story here? And then Dave Bautista just throwing in some superstar talent. Yeah. It's going to be good. So, yeah. And in the original team, right? It's the original guys that made Avatar The Last Airbender. They worked on the live action for a little bit and then they got they jumped off of it. So this is what they jumped off of it for to work on this, I'm pretty sure they're going to come up with some cool stuff. Yeah. They're also working on a whole new series that will be very much like Legend of Korra. And if you guys watch Legend of Korra, you know that she shifts the Avatar and the Avatar state so much. I wouldn't be surprised if it's sometime before Aang would make more sense to do it then. Uh, mm. Technology wise too. So it would be a little bit much to go beyond the technology of Legend of Korra as well. Let's go ahead and get the fallout. Now, I am episode five. I just finished episode five. You guys are closer to the end. Uh, let's get initial impres uh, impressions from fallout. Thomas, what do you think? <sighs> Knocked it out of the park. This yeah. show is so compelling start to finish. Um, the characters are interesting. This world. It's like how many different apocalyptic universes can we see? And it throws another one in the hat. And it's so still lived in and unique and original. And, and like it's just over the top some ways, almost like a Deadpool in a sense sometimes. And mm -hmm. God, I love it. Yeah. So it's been a, it's a, been a blast. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw in the fact that, yeah, it is that dystopian future, but it kept the humor that I was hoping it would. Um, I tried to explain, uh, you know, I was telling yeah, Squeak's like, oh, it'll be like a comedy. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, not at all. And I'm like, it's because it's so overtly insane. It's a Borderlands kind of comedy where they're shooting somebody and it's like the bullet doesn't need to be that strong kind of comedy. And so it's it's yeah. a lot of fun to hang out with it, seeing these mutants that are all wacky and stuff. And um, just the big old chunky uh, armor that is like, oh, that feels good in the game. I love that armor <laughs> when I can find it. <laughs> I like that one part where he's like, the guy takes the piece out of the back of him and all of a sudden he's out of power and it's like, I have searched for that damn piece that guy just took away so many times. <laughs> I know exactly what he's looking for. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I, that was interesting. See, that's the thing. Like, I don't come from it playing the games. So I'm just kind of more curious about this world and maybe that's like a benefit to me in this situation but you can definitely tell there's video game parts 
You were like, yeah. oh, I could tell like if I was fighting here or exploring this area, I feel like this would be a little hint. This would be something to focus on. Like they do a good job of balancing the video game elements with like this world and the live action part of it. I would say the thing that's most different from the video game is how much time they're spending in the vaults, because normally the vaults is where you start and then you leave it behind. And you'll find hints about the vault you came from on the outside world, but you don't really go back to the vaults. I don't think it really ever. So that's pretty new. Well, Isaac, yeah. what are your first initial impressions of this? I have come at it from the same uh, perspective as Thomas. I've not played. I, I shouldn't say any of the games. I did actually give the very first one a try one time. And mm. I gosh, it's been so long since I played like a computer RPG like that. I was like, oh, man, I don't know yeah. if I could do this. <laughs> so <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'll come back to this when I have a little bit more mental capacity to handle this. But uh, <laughs> but because I'm like involved in like the gaming community, I like know the vibe of Fallout and stuff like that. And man, this show nailed what I imagine the Fallout games to be like. And yeah. like you mentioned, Thomas, there are parts in this series where you know that this is I don't even know what reference it is, but I know that this is a reference to something in the video game. I don't get it because <laughs> yeah. I haven't played the games, but I know that that's a reference. But that <laughs> doesn't throw off the whole scope of the story. It doesn't like detract or, you know, <laughs> actually funny side note, like there's a line from somebody in the show that like side side quests are like the thing of you know being on the surface like there's always side quests and i was like yeah. okay that's that's definitely the story of fallout i i know that for sure even though not i haven't played the games side quests <laughs> are the thing in the fallout games but but yeah man i i i personally keep comparing it to the last of us from from uh mm -hmm. last year in in the top tier video game adaptation uh i think it was fantastic I'm going to go back and play the Fallout games because of this show. I just I love the vibe. And honestly, um, the way they were done, I'd say they are on the same level. Uh, the Last of Us and and Fallout, like just top tier, well made shows. But I liked Fallout more because of the comedic, like dystopian, you know, almost satirical vibe of of the show. Like, I, I just thought it was hilarious. And I continue to love it. Looking forward to, you know, if they continue to make more seasons of it. So and I did get to watch the whole series. Phenomenal. Absolutely a must watch That's for awesome. gamers, for sure. I would I would even say it's a must watch for for anybody that is interested in looking for a new show because it is amazing. Yeah, I think it's important if you're somebody who's not familiar with the games going into it is understanding, again, that vibe that uh, it's ridiculous. As long as you know yeah. that. It's like going in to watch it. I want to watch a spy movie and you go to see a Matthew Vaughn movie and you're like, get ready. They're going to do some silly shit and they're going to love it. Um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. as long as you know that going into it, it's great. I, one thing I love as a gamer is watching them pass up so much supplies and it driving me bananas <laughs> that they keeps leaving bullets behind. Like, how are you not looting everybody? <laughs> there's that. Right. Um, there's a part where uh, the ghoul played by Walter Goggins, who I will follow into hell. Um, he like when he. He kills somebody. I won't spoil anything. He kills somebody. He turns the guy over and starts cutting him open to get pieces. I'm like, that guy's played the game. <laughs> like, it made <laughs> so much sense. <laughs> it was yeah. great. Oh, dude, yeah, to your point, Isaac, like, this definitely makes me want to go back and play the games, though. Because I'm like, this world is so interesting. It's like, it seems like it's the past. But then when you look at the timeline, it's the future. And, yeah. you know, I guess it's all about rather than taking, you know, battery power, we went fusion or like nuclear energy and like this world that they build out of it. Oh man, it's so cool, man. I yeah, I I'm gonna play it after this. Maybe after actually Hell Divers, but still after yeah, that. Same. Yeah, actually <laughs> yeah. to to that point as well. What what really is the icing on the cake of Fallout is the soundtrack. Like the old mm. like 40s, 50s like vibe of the soundtrack is just mm -hmm. chef's kiss. It it is phenomenal. I absolutely love that part of it and it's got the and again i have not played the games but i know the fallout like theme and right when you start those episodes you get that fallout theme and like you kind of get the old like warm record sound of it yeah. oh it's just it's peak man peak soundtrack for sure <laughs> i was trying to explain that to somebody that was like it's odd that my generation knows about knows the all the words to 
I do want to set the world on fire. Yeah, that song. Yeah, the it's Cosby weird that we know that song, <laughs> but we do. And it's Fallout 3. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're killing it there. Technology wise, it is in 2077, I believe. Um, the key with this world is instead of going battery with fusion, instead of going microchips, we stick with tubes. So there's a few things that, that kind of diverge. Um, but I love how so far I haven't seen anybody who hasn't played the game get confused by that because i thought that's going to be a little bit tricky it's like alternate technology rep but ain't nobody got a problem with that i like that did you guys have any problems with that understanding no it was like a little bit on the timeline because you know when you first see the ghoul before he becomes a ghoul i was Mm -hmm. like all right like what year was this and then the nukes start going off and everything but um yeah that was the only part that kind of got me and then later on lucy finds something out but it took me a second and then it was quickly kind of solved, I guess. Yeah, like there's something I, that explains that. I, I yeah. kind of like how they did it in that they show a lot of flashbacks from, all, you know, all the different characters, honestly, and, and a lot from, from Ghoul for sure. But, you know, they start off the series um, talking, you know, like where he is when the fallout starts, yeah. right? Which makes Mm -hmm. sense. Like, it totally makes sense. And then they go into kind of the present day and you get those flashbacks every and and we kind of uncover the story as we go along, which I really appreciated because I feel like a lot of shows and we as the audience these days, we want everything now. We want like I I need to know what's happening right now. And if I don't Mm -hmm. get it, I'm going to stop watching like that. That's kind of like a lot of our our online attitudes um, so I, I liked that they, we slowly uncovered that story and it kept me interested and engaged, but, but yeah, it definitely was a different, uh, a different way of telling it than we've, we've seen a lot of shows, uh, around these times. So. That's exactly how the games play too, is uncovering the story as you explore the, the above, uh, world. And I think that's something that maybe, uh, uh Halo missteps on there. There's a lot of ex- explanation dumps and stuff like that in Halo and, the last of us a little bit but not too bad right uh we have that small part in the beginning where we're stuck in one of the towns and then we move on uh but this one is playing out much like the games where the more you invest your time into it the more it's going to reward you with more story more backstory and that's i love that that's really a good move yeah yeah the casting on this thing uh walter goggins again i said is is just he's amazing he plays cooper howard and or the ghoul uh watching him getting to makeup i saw the behind the scenes of him doing makeup it's like three hours of makeup And then they do the white dots on his nose to remove that the whole time. What a trooper. Um, And then I also want to shout out. Yeah, it looks really good. I want to shout out Ella Purnell, who's playing Lucy. Um, Before this, she's in um, Yellow Jackets, which is a Showtime show. Very good. Um, And she's she's pretty awesome in Yellow Jackets season one. So it's good to see her kind of evolve into this role as well. She's doing pretty great in this. Yeah, with Walter Goggins, is it right? He, I love this dude. I mean, like I've seen him in so many things. He's not that person I know his name, but I never seen him as like a lead. It's so yeah. cool to see him as a lead in this, and a hundred percent deserving of it too. Like he carries. It's like one of those shows too, where when they go back to the flashback, like I actually care about what he was like before. Normally, yeah. I'm like, stop giving us this. Like, just give us all the new stuff where he's badass. It's like, I don't even need that. I, I want to see how he goes from this guy to what we see later on. And he's he's so good, like massively captivating, like such a talented actor. Uh, there's different things that he's realizing as things are happening. And like the realization on his face, like you could just tell what he's thinking. Man, he, he's oh, he's so good. The cast is so good in the show. Yeah. And he, I mean, he's killing it all over the place because he's also doing great things in invincible and in animated uh you know voiceover yeah, totally and stuff yeah like cecil that. Yeah. yeah cecil and in, in invincible so good like he, yeah. he is just killing it absolutely but one one person that stuck out to me that i did not expect was uh moises arias who plays norm mclean yep. yeah <sighs> okay so you you Dude, start yes. like right away he's portrayed as this coward and then mm-hmm. his storyline became my favorite as the series went on mm. and oh man i i don't want to spoil anything because we're we're trying to keep okay. it spoiler free yeah. but i absolutely loved his storyline he develops into this phenomenal character by the end of the series and i'm yeah it's it's great he, yeah and he's a relatively i mean like he's definitely had a, his share of roles and stuff like that but like he's not a guy that you would just recognize you know right off the bat uh right. generally so 
but yeah, he he's phenomenal. Love his storyline, and the whole cast is is great. Like this is just a yeah. well made show, and the the cast plays their parts perfectly. So with him in particular, I was like, where do I know this guy from? And I think my wife was like, oh, he's from like Sweet Life of Zach and Cody or something. <laughs> and I was wow. like, he's one of those guys that you see and you're like, do I know him no, from somewhere? Right. And like, I was like, I remember him I being a little guy. Totally. And I'm like, I remember him as a little kid, I think. And then I'm like, what has he done since then? I have no idea. But then he shows up. I'm like, this guy is so good. Get him into more stuff ASAP. I, I was. Yeah, I'm glad you called him out. Yeah, Igor from uh, King of Staten Island is like one of his last big projects that he did. Uh, that Pete Davidson movie. He oh, was in that one. that's a good movie too, actually. Yeah, um, and even like uh, yeah. Zach Cherry, by the way, just real quick, plays Woody. I, I I don't know what it is about him, but I just love the guy. I want to give him a hug, but he's from Severance, and so uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, one yeah, of the guys yeah. trying to run the show. Totally. Right, <laughs> he's just he's I love so that nice. dude. He was also <laughs> in Spider Man. He was also in Shang Chi. Like yeah, he's oh, yeah, making his way around right. franchises. Yeah, he's he's great. <laughs> it's good stuff. Any other big shout outs? And Matt Barry, by the way, uh, being the voice Matt of the Barry. robots. Oh, God, Mr. Handy. Yeah. Uh, so iconic. Um, there, there is a good Matt Barry scene in there, too. And, and it's yeah. pretty pivotal. So I was like surprised because I knew he's the voice of the robot. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. know he was going to actually have a scene. And I loved his scene, too. He's he's great. Follow Matt Barry on TikTok because he's all about just sharing old clips of himself or whatever. He shared a clip of him from that one that I haven't seen in the show yet, but I know it's coming. Um <laughs> But yeah, he's worth following on TikTok. He's he loves it. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and any last shout outs. And then I want to get a grade from this, too. Let's go out of 10. Uh, Thomas, let's start with you. Uh, let's see. I, I still have 20 minutes left. So, I mean, everything could change. My grade right. could completely go out of the window. It could be a nine right now and then, you know, a four. But uh, mm-hmm. probably probably not going to be. So yeah. I will <laughs> stick with nine. Um, yeah. I'm digging this show. Yeah, again, just smart writing where more of the story, more of the backstory of the characters gets revealed as you go on. Um, I'm so intrigued. I'm bummed that they binge dropped it in a way. I'm also bummed that we're going to have to wait a year for another season of it because it's like I want more now. Um, But I guess I could go back and play the game. So, yeah, as of right now, nine. Just so well done. Also, shout out to the sets. Whoever made all the sets for this show. Yeah, it's like it puts you in that place. And that's phenomenally phenomenally done yeah and the bright colors i think help with that too because it's like so bright that it like the green screen effect or whatever they're using it doesn't matter because it's so bright and so it's not like they're trying to go dark tone like they would with the last of us um isaac any last thoughts and what would your score be yeah uh man i think i'm right along i think actually you you put out that range of four to nine i was like dang you could like in that last 20 minutes you could drop that was, down to yeah, a four i was kidding like, pretty Ooh, nice. <laughs> i'm pretty sure i don't know can, what's gonna but... happen in that 20 minutes it's gonna totally yeah, destroy the show everything. for you but hey i've been disappointed before <laughs> like you ever watched the mist you're like oh. come on all you do yeah. is take two steps out of the mist oh, boy. okay <laughs> yeah yeah but i i am on the same wavelength as thomas i'm giving this one a nine it was just so well done. And I think I probably could have appreciated it more if I had played the games, but even as an outside observer, fantastic show. I really, really enjoyed it and looking forward to seeing more. Yeah. Well, shit, I'm nine too, guys. Uh, my only thing that's keeping me away from a 10 is I wish the pace sometimes would be a turned up a notch, but I think it's fine. Sometimes they're doing a little bit too much exploring, which is very video game accurate again, <laughs> but sometimes I'm just like, you know, fast travel, <laughs> you can get there. And so, um, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's cool, and I just absolutely love this cast so much. They're killing it. So, uh, Walter Goggins, by the way, if you want more Walter Goggins, Righteous Gemstone he plays uh, Uncle Bobby Billy and kills it. And he bases that character off his dad. If you see his dad, he dresses like the ghoul. He's that guy all the time. So it's a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. Isn't he in Justified too? He's he's kind of like the main bad guy, just the main arch enemy, I guess, in Bas- in uh, Justified. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Um. Uh, by the way, if you wanted to play the Fallout game, which right away I'm getting texts from friends that are like, hey, you want to play some uh, Fallout because of this? Yeah. Uh, Fallout 76 is free if you have Prime. And if you're watching this, you have Prime. So go to your Prime account. You have this month to do it and you'll get Fallout 76 for free. And then uh, 4 and 3, I know we're on a heavy discount on Steam right now. So if you guys want to play, make sure you yeah, pick it up Yeah, they're like now. 5 bucks a piece. And you can get a package of Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics for 5 bucks as well because that's what I did on Steam to play that. and then stopped playing it 
So yeah. <laughs> there's a shout out to Fallout One, which I was like, I did like normally Fallout Three and above is kind of what's mentioned, not Fallout One. Mm-hmm. But when they do the new California stuff, and I was like, oh snap, they're yeah. going to the old school stuff yeah. there. That's mm. neat. Yeah, they put in a lot of Easter eggs uh, throughout the show. I mean, I'm assuming because like, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to say it because the last episode there is a very big one that Fallout fans are going to go nuts over it. So you guys, or Frank, you will when you yeah. finally watch that last episode. But as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to yeah. put it on. I'm watching yeah. probably uh, the rest of the night. <laughs> it's it's pretty big. So yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of Fallout fans are going to be excited about this. And even non-Fallout fans like myself, like I yeah. absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. Lastly, I want to make sure to touch on Infinity Bros. So I want to make sure you guys head over there again. Links in the description, start clicking around and stuff like that. What are some of the topics you guys are discussing over there? Yeah, so I mean, like, we obviously started our podcast uh, based around the MCU, but it kind of morphed into a more of a pop culture podcast. We mostly review film and TV shows on the podcast, but we are doing a ton of Magic the Gathering content uh, on our TikTok specifically, and our Instagram's been kind of blowing up over the last couple months. Uh, Yeah, Mm -hmm. Robbie, uh, one of our Infinity Bros, is big magic guy and so is is jared we have of six bros and i'd say yeah those two guys for sure and then they kind of drag the rest of us into it so like they <laughs> they like are making sure that we're getting magic content with the rest of the bros included <laughs> so yeah. so i have been dragged into this uh kicking and screaming against my will but it's it's a blast <laughs> it's a great time magic community is is really passionate about magic the gathering and robbie has been killing it and selling stuff on drip too if you guys are familiar with yeah. whatnot it's kind of like an auction website um drip is kind of another version of that and he's been ripping and shipping magic cards and he does some other stuff too like uh there's a one piece trading card game uh star wars actually just came out with star wars mm-hmm. unlimited which is a pretty similar uh style of trading card game to magic the gathering so he's been doing a lot of different uh, content over there on Drip. But yeah, man, we and we just love to honestly have a good time. So we've got a Discord that we hang out with people in uh, and, you know, on socials. I'm I'm pretty much me and Robbie are pretty much the social media guys. So if you guys interact with us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you're probably talking to me or or Robbie. So, yeah, uh, TikTok, YouTube, we're we're kind of trying to make some splashes and and having some success so definitely come and check us out we would appreciate uh, any um interaction we'd love to meet you and, and hang out with you check out the infinitybros.com or email us at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com i want to make sure to mention also if you're a one piece fan it's really fun to follow along because you're getting these live reactions from a first time one piece and i'm not a one piece watcher but i'm still like in loving all the comments <laughs> it's crazy i passionate people yeah one piece is another like fandom that they are crazy they're very passionate about one piece so yeah robbie started a a, like a watch along almost like every once in a while he just gives an update and like his thoughts on some some of the arcs and stuff that are happening and dude people absolutely love one piece so (laughs) it has been really fun to watch uh, that whole process as well yeah, I liked That's your videos on Nick Cage. You know, you were doing <laughs> yeah. all the Nick Cage, and I was like, "What is he watching?" Oh, there yeah, it is. He's oh, sure, sure. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. Like, okay, so the whole thing that started the Nick Cage reviews is I watched uh, what? What's that? Gosh, what is that movie that him with Pedro Pascal that came out? Oh, like a uh, unbearable weight of massive talent. Unbearable weight of massive talent. Coming up dude. on challenge like, accepted. I I I like Nicolas Cage before that, but I watched that movie and I was like. I need to know more about this guy. Like this dude is <laughs> like, he plays up his own legacy in that movie. And it's just, it's hilarious. That's, that's one of my top five Nicholas Cage movies of all time. It's so good. So I just started me on this journey. I'm, I think I'm at like around like 50 Nicholas Cage wow. movies watched and Damn. he's got like a hundred plus credits on IMDb. So I, I'm just scratching the surface at this point, but yeah, it's been a fun journey. There's a lot of, interesting movies <laughs> in his yeah. filmography so yeah, yeah some sure of them are is. ridiculous but some of them are so damn good like he's oh, he's not yeah. a bad actor he just likes no, to play it no up a lot. he just he i mean like it or love it or hate it like dude uh 
he tries a lot of different things and mm -hmm. uh he's passionate about his his craft so sometimes that turns out really weird <laughs> yeah yeah say sometimes what you it want turns out really bad but <laughs> <laughs> yeah say what you want about face off but that's Dude, i love that movie classic. oh it's con air for me con, yeah. that con, con air, air for sure oh. with the long hair but yep. like face off that yep. movie would trip me out as a little kid i was like what <laughs> you could put someone else's face on your face yeah. and then they take over your whole life if you and, like, want if you want nicholas cage at his cagiest you gotta watch face off man oh yeah. that yeah. is a it's a classic it's it's but so right, good baby. It's also good acting though, because he keep he, they're doing the mannerisms of each other yeah. quite well, yeah. I think, in that one. Very oh yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. And it's it's pretty it's pretty bizarre actually when you're like watching it, you're like, man, like, are they actually did they actually trade faces? Like, I'm kind of yeah, <laughs> kind of like thinking they like studied each other's mannerisms and stuff for this movie because it's it's pretty it's pretty wonky. Yeah, oh, yeah. and then uh, one of the Cohen brothers classics, Raising Arizona. Oh, He's in that one too, and so yeah, good. it's just a masterpiece. Yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. Love that one. So uh, if you guys are a big fan, I don't know if you're a fan of me, if you're a fan of Thomas, we are both on Infinity Bros. We were guested for the an episode. The last two episodes, guys. You can check out go. episode 194 and 193 with uh, right. Frank and Thomas, irrespectively, like the opposite there. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas yeah. is on uh, 1 at 93 and Frank is on 194. We talked about Avatar, the last Airbender live action with Thomas, yeah. and we talked about Halo Season 2 with Frank. So a lot of a lot of fun talking about those yeah. properties and yeah it was it was a great time to have you guys on and i'm glad we were able to make this happen i was able to join up with the, both of you guys at the same time for this one yeah, yeah that was great yeah uh but yeah. before we go let's do three questions out of the geek box get people more familiar with you i'm gonna start with the first one thomas you're welcome to answer these as well oh, okay. uh, what robot would make the best sidekick what do you think isaac Ooh, oh boy um hmm. okay so I'm I'm like when I think robot, I th I always think Star Wars, like there's so many iconic droids in Star Wars that would make great sidekicks. But after playing um, Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor, <laughs> BD1 is yep. like almost a no brainer. Like dude is so cute. he he's he's cute. He's like a friend to uh, Cal and he's like one of the most useful droid sidekicks in like Star Wars. So like and he's like you know small enough he you don't really have to worry about him he just like sits on your shoulder and yeah he he like feeds you information about everything that you're doing so bd1's probably my number one choice that's a good idea that's so funny that was R2 gonna be my a little answer too sassy, by the way. <laughs> gotcha. yeah. yeah yeah that's your answer too that was honestly gonna be mine and i was like r2d2 he'll probably say that so <laughs> i was like i gotta go with bd1 and then he said it but yeah i mean r2d2 yeah r 2 who has some sass, but yeah. also like all the tools and everything that uh, they can pull out or he can pull out or whatever to open things is like too good. They're yeah. like Star Wars does droids the best. Yeah, they really do. Um, there's actually, okay, I can keep going to the side stuff you guys check out, but there's a comic book run they just recently did where there's a um, virus that goes amongst the droids. Check it out. And it's like a revolution. Ooh. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's Same. pretty, that's a good idea. What is your very first gaming console and your favorite game on it? Boy. <laughs> that's a that's a tough one for me because honestly my first gaming console is pc and there's mm -hmm. so many games to <laughs> choose from on pc <laughs> uh but i i guess what was it is it just favorite game on that console or like yeah your... so first console and then favorite game on that one oh, man mm. that's a that's tough to choose from a pc game but i i guess i if i'm going back to my like childhood like memories civilization 2 is a big one for me and oh, really really got me into i love strategy games i and mm -hmm. civilization 2 was the start of that like i remember playing that when i was and and this is not an easy game either for no. like uh i think i probably started playing when i was like seven or eight years old but i got hooked hard man like i i would yeah. just stay up late into the night playing that game my fingers and toes would be freezing because i'd be sitting in the basement on i'm like the family pc <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I'd be, like good memories playing that game man so I, I guess i gotta go with that one just for the nostalgia factor and it's still a solid game like going back and playing it it's it's just a good time so do you ever play any of the newer civilization games i do yeah I, i've i occasion boot up uh civ 6 but like man 
you don't get the feeling of Civ 2 or even Civ 3 too. I, I I played Civ 3 quite a bit, but like those games, like you just you just went to town and took over the world. You know, like that yeah. that was like the fun part of those games is the military <laughs> conquest. And it's you like best. can't even do that in the new civilizations. Like there's still yeah. fun games. Don't get me wrong. I, I still enjoy playing them, but but man, there wasn't it the feeling is not the same playing the new civilization games yeah. as, as the old one. I think it was like four or five months ago, me and my buddy Scott, we played it and we were like, let's just finish this. Like, you know, that's crazy. Just to like sit down and start and finish a game. <laughs> yeah, right. And full on overnight we played, which is oh, actually going to go to the next card here. But it was full on overnight. And then, then I was like, oh, my God, I am fully in my 30s right now. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Thomas, uh, what about you? First console, favorite game? I can't remember which which one's first, the Super NES or the Sega Genesis. Oh, but they're about oh the same time, really. Yeah. Rather the same. Yeah. yeah. The same time. There was, I remember playing a lot of Streets of Rage. I remember playing, I don't know if it was like Sonic 1 or Sonic 2. They had Tails. I played that yeah. nonstop. I was like, okay, there you go. Like, yeah, I remember. So whatever it was, uh, back to Streets of Rage. And then one thing that's newer, I guess, would be the original PlayStation was Resident Evil. And then there was an X, uh, an X Games game that I loved. And yeah. it was like a downhill racer. You could pick a luge, a skateboard, a BMX. Like for some reason, all of these games are just like flooding in. And I can't remember what system they're on, but like, yeah, I had them all. I had them all. Something about back in the day when you're a kid and your video game access was so limited, like your mom and dad would rent something from Blockbusters or they bought the one game that's going to have to last you for a month. And so you played, you gave games a lot longer a shot. So like 1080, which was a snowboarding game on the N64. Yeah. I never would have picked it up today, but man, play the hell out of it. I unlocked everything on that game. Totally. You know? yeah. yeah. All the tricks and like just the weird physics in that game doesn't make any sense. But like, yeah, I would play the crap out of that too. It was so yeah. much fun. Last card here. Uh, have you ever played an RPG all night long? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. Skyrim. So many Great nights choice. all night playing Skyrim, dude. Uh, Skyrim was my jam back in the 360 days. Oh, my gosh. Just real quick, Todd Howard, of course, of Bethesda fame, has been approached. He just talked to Ijen about this. Like, hey, Fallout's working really well. Any yeah, other it is. And he's like, everybody comes up to me wanting to make an Elder Scrolls project. I am not interested. And so it's like, <laughs> oh, dude, after seeing what you guys just did, mm-hmm. I am right. interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 This is the Starcraft count. Uh, is that not, it's more not like necessarily animal, no, right? but yeah, that is a great old nighter. <laughs> yeah, that okay. I, I gotta think of it. Or Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII. Perfect one. Mm. That's yeah, yeah, I played Final yep. Fantasy VII when I remember that first came out, and I don't remember if it was on PlayStation or PlayStation 2, but I played that all night. Just yeah. I was like, I gotta upgrade my guys, I gotta get that new character. Like, when's Tifa is gonna be on my team? Like that kind of stuff. So, man, oh, such good times. Yeah, it's just not worth it anymore, even though I played Helldiver till like three in the morning a couple <laughs> well, nights ago. So not quite an all nighter, yeah. but it felt like it the next morning on the all nighter topic. So like I think this was last year, maybe it was a couple years ago. I don't remember. Um, I on my birthday, I, we didn't do anything like special for my birthday. So I was like, I'm going to play games all night tonight. And yeah, I'm, I'm 30 <laughs> yeah. years old. Like I haven't done that for, I don't know, t- before five ten years maybe or something like that so i actually booted up civ 6 and literally played that all night and it's not hard to play civ mm-hmm. 6 for a whole night because yeah there are many times where i playing that game and i look at my clock and it's 3 a.m i'm like oh crap i can't believe it's 3 a.m already like what the <laughs> heck happened so yeah not hard to play those types of games for hours and hours and hours and i'm on it and i remember it was 6 a.m i looked at the clock and i was like oh my gosh like i i don't know if i could do this i like got i gotta go to bed right now yeah <laughs> the so, next day is not gonna be kind to me anymore at 30 <laughs> right. years as old. a kid your parents waking up like are you still up like no i woke up early and got on <laughs> oh, yeah shit. yeah but now i'm like what am i adult i'm not gonna have to worry about this and now we're just like <laughs> i don't have enough coffee in this house for this to work out <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah, yeah, okay. Dude, that was also with super smash brothers we call it yeah. stds Smash till dawn. <laughs> Got smash, smash, smash till name. dawn. Yep. Oh, that's a oh. shirt right there. <laughs> yep. I wish great. I came up with it. I'm pretty sure there was a pro Smash player that did, yeah. but yeah, we used to STD all the time. Oh, man. Every new World of Warcraft expansion, we do all-nighters. Um, it's 
this last one I did too, and it was not easy. Uh, but my first one was Pokemon Yellow. I mean, just like chomping batteries up, mm -hmm. but just going and then going to school after that. Like, oh God, that was so hard. But <laughs> that was the struggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two double A's at a time. Worth, worth it. Worth it. All right, Good Isaac. Times. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, guys. Infinity Bros Podcast. All the links in the description. Um, and then I want to give another quick shout out. We got Thomas here. Thomas, we, we overlook you. Thomas, you're on here all the time now. Uh, of course, check out Ch uh, Challenge Accepted, the podcast part of the network, but also he runs a podcast called Joystick Show with Scott and Drake, both wonderful dudes. Uh, so go check that one as well. I'll make sure to put that in the description as well. Because I don't do it enough, Thomas. I don't do that enough. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.